If you've ever caught yourself wondering what it is like to be a World of Warships Legends community contributor slash YouTuber who forgets to press record and gets caught broadside a minute and 30 into the game, well, you're going to experience it here very shortly. Yeah, there's 30,000 health gone in the opening minutes, as, like I said, I forgot to press record and I wasn't paying attention. There were no destroyers in this game, however, I was spotted and didn't quite get the rudder off in time. And, well, this is the opening to what became a very fun slash annoying game. Now, we all have those games where the blue team seems to go down faster than those girls who are trying to find themselves in college. However, what makes those games and any games in general far more annoying and frustrating is having teammates who not only don't do anything, but also are the armchair admiral of your team. As we look back at this very skillful Radar Mino play, we decide that, uh, yeah, this position is probably going to be beneficial as a lot of our ships are clumped up in the center there. And part of this game, if you do not know, in World of Warships Legends, is developing crossfires. I could probably spend over an hour talking about crossfires and different things, so in order to keep it simple, we're basically just going to say, spread out. But unfortunately for me, in this game, one of our fellow Minos, who is sitting at this island here, didn't think that that was an appropriate strategy. Despite us having a Palmern, a Montana, a Wooster, another Montana, and a fifth ship that I don't quite remember in the moment, all allocating their ship's resources to our side, for some reason he thought it would be better for me to join up with the fleet there at the island, which apparently has extra doubloons or something that I didn't know about. Because as you can see, there are two cruisers there, as well as a third battleship on the way. Let me make this statement now before this video goes on even further. You are allowed to play this game however you want. If you want to sit behind one island for the entire game spamming for your teammates' help, by all means, go and do it. Do not, however, expect your teammates to be very receptive of your commands. And in this particular game, as you can see, we are getting the onslaught of commands as we are slowly backing up into position here. We have found ourselves an armchair admiral. I would like to make a counterpoint, as you guys will often see me ping the mini-map for important locations, the locations of destroyers, getting capture objectives. If your pings are in a friendly, objective-oriented fashion, and of course I did not experience the game from this gentleman's perspective, then by all means, ping the minimap. However, if you are refusing to move and expect everyone else on your team to sit there and cater to you, I can guarantee you you are not going to make any friends in this game by excessively pinging and spamming the command wheel. Now getting back to the strategy portion as we were talking about earlier, there is that Palmer, there is the Alaska, there is a Montana, a cruiser, another battleship, and another cruiser I believe at the very edge of our range over there in Bravo. So my position right now is pretty good, however if I stay here I will be at risk of being rushed by a Montana, a Palmer, what's left of this Alaska, and being farmed by whatever battleship and or cruiser are also out there as you can see the very edge of some shells on their way. If I had not been paying attention, as I wasn't earlier, that could have been another nasty hit. So, paying attention to the minimap and being aware of your surroundings will always net you good results. And that is what these few ships over here did not see, as you see another salvo heading our way. Could I have been more aggressive in this situation? Potentially, yes. Would it have worked out in our favor? I don't think so. And here is actually a good learning tip. You can see on the minimap that that booster was actually turned out, and some people are like, Aaron, why do you aim so high? Well, with the way ellipses work in this game, and as you can see, a Citadel secured, our aim is right on target. Now, of course, RNG has a huge factor to play in that. You could aim at the perfect spot every time and never get a Citadel. And as in another game I have kind of on cue, you could angle for a majority of the game in that one random floater, will smack you right dead center citadel and <laughs> just create a frustrating experience overall. 
So despite us distracting a potential five ships, our team has still managed to give up the advantage on a three to one trade. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the reason we are kiting out, as it's called in World of Warships Legends, is to draw the attention of the enemy while still maintaining angled, and also not putting ourselves into the farming range of the Wooster, as well as the other Montana, and trying to distract this Palmer and other Montana, and hope for some miracle that our teammates pull it together over there at Alpha. But instead of trying to push through to A or get some form of advantageous position, our remaining battleships and cruiser, well, two of which have died, and the last is that Mino is just still sitting there at that island, not even trying to get the sea cap or gain another advantageous position, as we mentioned earlier. And I find it truly ironic that this guy is a radar Mino as well. Of course, the radar Mino has its place, as we mentioned in our video the other day. However, if he had chose smoke in this situation, he could have pushed out a little bit further while I spotted, such as I did this Montana here, and he could have easily DPM'd the remaining few ships. Despite getting unlucky, what our kite has done has prevented those ships from chasing us. So now they are more focused on the ships in the central location, and it is time to reposition. When you are kiting, you have to know when to go dark and reposition. As we are in the apex of our turn right here, we do not want to shoot. Despite us having a rather broadside Montana, I want to get most of my turn off as previously we had lost a huge chunk of health sailing broadside. And as just a general rule of thumb, you never really want to shoot when you are at the height of your turn. I saw that this Montana was headed straight for that island, and he ended up beaching, so we get a beautiful broadside shot. We aim a little bit behind, as I'm guessing he's going to reverse. And as usual, my guess was correct, we get a beautiful salvo, and just some unfortunate RNG. Still 50k gone from his broadside, but only one Citadel. But alas, that is why we continue to play the game, always trying to get those illustrious dev strikes. Moving in on this Palmer here, and I kind of had to make a business decision. Do I want to brawl this Palmer again, putting myself into farming range of that Wooster and potentially that Montana? I really don't, so we're going to kind of sit here at mid range while he makes a decision. I'm semi angled in this position. He could chunk our superstructure, but I also know that I can chunk his, and my guns are going to do a lot more damage than his guns. However, I decided best, since he was focused and his turrets were turned, that we go ahead and make our escape here. And again, you can see the salvos coming over from the Wooster and that other Montana on that flank as another one of our friendlies goes down. It's always pondering to me what happens on that side of the map when we have well we had five ships and we've sunk two of them on our side so a four on six or five over there i'm not exactly sure but again just as we talked about we throw a shot high into his superstructure end up getting the high caliber so 30 percent of the overall damage to the reds done by us that in combination with our secondaries and what looks to be a permanent fire is going to allow us to whittle down that Palmer who actually dev struck that Mino. So again, yes, possibly not the worst spammer I've ever had, but it's always frustrating when you're doing the absolute most you can, and it's proven not only by the medals, and of course the XP, but the results on the board. I wish attracted damage was a stat that they showed on the end screen because as you can see we are attracting a lot of it and despite a very poor opening salvo or position by us getting caught trying to set up my OBS recording, we have managed to attract a lot of damage and still maintain a good portion of our health while eliminating three ships and doing well over 30% to the enemy's total HP, which of course is the high caliber metal. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, without a huge cap advantage, there is going to be no way really for us to win. I 
I could have pushed into this Montana, but that would have meant giving up a broadside. As you can see, he is within our concealment ring. So what I end up doing is decide to switch to HE and then slow down a little bit, hoping that I can catch him on a fire. He puts it out and then we can utilize our long range secondaries that the Ohio has. Unfortunately, that Wooster is making his way into position and I put out a single fire, which is just never a good idea. But at the time, the Wooster was not able to shoot over that island or have enough range on us. However, he does come back into range. And just as a general rule of thumb, you should never put out a single fire. And as another rule of thumb, when you need RNG the most, it will never give it to you. Three shell hits, two of which were shatters, probably on the deck or something, I don't know. And zero fires, despite battleships having some of the higher HE chance in the game. And on top of that, because I've, you know, of course I was shooting HE, he decides to turn broadside. Probably because I was shooting HE, but now that I know he is willing to show broadside, we are going to try to, you know, trick him into giving broadside and then switch to the AP. But of course, our remaining cruiser gets deathstruck, and now it is solo warrior opportunity time. However, we don't have the caps, and the enemy ships are not within range, so unless a miracle of Trident missiles comes down and deletes them, which I know some people would want in the game, this game is, is just, yeah, it's just not going to happen. Despite some horrific dispersion on that one, we actually do connect the permanent fire there. So he is now burning. And there's a chance for 300, right? We're at 225 now with a permanent fire going and a few cruisers left to finish off. Could we get the solo warrior? Like I said earlier, it's probably not going to happen. And I've yelled at people for kind of dragging along the game, especially destroyers. Now, of course, I am shooting and remaining spotted. All I'm doing is simply angling and just not giving myself up as bait. And here's a good little tactic to utilize. We've talked about this before against Agile or cruisers in general, right? I don't think this Wooster was necessarily an Agile cruiser. However, we shot one shell. He decided to dodge against that as of course he was broadside. We catch him stopping and turning in. So we throw the shot accordingly. Again, dispersion kind of cucks us there. We do get one pen, which ended up being a defender ribbon as well. But as we mentioned, this game, I truthfully had no hope. My teammates were abysmal. And again, stats, XP, damage, none of that really matters. You're all going to get bad teammates. I've been a bad teammate before. But what is worse than being a bad teammate is a bad teammate who, number one, doesn't know it, and number two, spams the comm wheel. So if we do have to learn anything from this game, play it, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but also don't spam the comm wheel. Don't be that guy, as the title would indicate here, as we get trolled once again. We end up going down right before the buzzer here, but 260k is a nice little finishing touch for this game. So a fun one, yes, we could have done maybe a little bit more in the beginning. Again, I probably could have pushed into those five ships, but without much team support, who knows? But let me know your guys' thoughts, right? Do you get frustrated with those teammates who spam the comm wheel and expect you to do everything while doing nothing? Are you that teammate who does that? Or do you even pay attention to that? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. I love you guys. Hey, run out. Peace.